Often it's believed that if you're an American, you're Christian, and a lot of Americans believe they are Christians. And Mike Dyer, now senior pastor of the River Foursquare Church, believed that he was one of those till he actually got to meet Jesus. So today what we're going to talk about is, do you know Jesus, and do you actually have a relationship with him, or do you kind of just take it with a grain of salt? Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so so you always thought you were a Christian and you weren't really. Could you explain that to me a little bit? Well, you know, gro like you said, growing up in America, you know, some people tend to think, hey, I'm an American, so I'm a Christian. You know, I mean, there are uh, so many things that have a Christian tone to them in our in our world. And, you know, I remember early on as a kid, you know, people would talk bad about Jesus and inside it bothered me or you know they they use God's uh, name in the wrong way and I, we never grew up going to church nothing any of that I went to church twice when I was a kid once on Easter and the Sunday after that and then we never went to church again it was when I was five so um, I didn't come to the Lord until I was going into my senior year in high school a friend of mine invited me to come to a youth group and uh, I said, yeah, I'll go. And actually, I went because he told me there were some cute girls that were there. So I've I heard said, that yeah. so many times. So I said, i got to go <laughs> hang out and see these cute <laughs> girls. And uh, we went, and I had an encounter that is really unexplainable, um, you know, uh, to really understand how it, how it felt to me. I remember being in this uh, service, and the pastor, it was his first Sunday as a youth pastor, was giving a message, and it just hit me right in the heart. And... Mm -hmm. uh, I knew at that moment that I needed to come to Christ, and I did. I responded to the message and, and went forward, and I remember standing up, and the youth pastor tells the story this way. He says, uh, uh, man, I was scared when you got up because I was a big football player. I had a shaved head, <laughs> letterman's jacket on, and I remember being mad because I was crying, and I was crying in front of everybody, and uh, I stood up, and I kicked my chair out from behind me, <laughs> And I walked up to the front, and I gave my life to Christ. And uh, he tells that story. Man, I was scared. I thought this kid was coming to whoop me. And uh, went up there and completely changed my life. You know, I, I had an encounter, and it was a complete 180-degree turn in my life. You Instantly? Know, I, yeah. Just I was, immediately that I moment? was the typical high school jock kid, you know, involved in all the stuff that a lot of kids do, you know, going from parties, uh, girls, and just all this stuff. And uh, immediately my life was changed, transformed. I didn't have any, you know, some people talk about becoming a Christian, maybe going into this time of backsliding or struggling. That wasn't me. God transformed my life, and I became a brand new person uh, from that moment, and it was awesome. Wow, yeah, wow. It, it, was, it was a life-changing experience. And then going forward from there, uh, really uh, grew quickly in my relationship with God, became a leader in our youth ministry, um, began to lead small groups. And I remember being at camp probably about six months later, and we were at a, a, a summer camp for kids. And I felt like God spoke to my heart and said that I was going to do what Craig is doing, and that's who my youth pastor was, Craig Lawrence. And I remember going to him and I said, Craig, I don't know what this means, but I felt like God said I'm going to do what you do. And I just started to hang out with him. And from there going forward, man, my life was about youth ministry wow. and impacting the lives of other, other students. You know, I remember being uh, in my senior year of high school and me and a couple of my friends on the football team gave our lives to Christ. And we had about 30 of our teammates come into this youth group with us. And several of us are now still in full-time ministry. There's five of us that are currently serving as pastors and missionaries. You know, isn't that amazing when, when you really start turning for God, how he ends up using you yeah. and you don't expect it's you at all yeah. and it's touching everybody around you. Yeah. If I'm thinking of a high school football team, those yeah. would be the last that would show up in church yeah. and here, 30, you said? Yeah. 30? Yeah. That almost sounds like, is that even yeah. possible? Yeah. And you know what? It's really those in, in my mind are the people that are so influential in impacting other kids, yeah. you know what I mean? Because that's something that I understand now. I didn't understand it then, but what happened was we had influence. And because we had influence, I was now able to 
share with these guys what God was doing in my life. And they saw that the change was genuine. They saw that I didn't continue to do the same old stuff that I did, that uh, you know, I began to live my life a different way. And no, I didn't have it all together, but they saw that I was genuine and real in my change. And I think that that's what drew them to want to be a part of what was going on. And it was just the power of God. I mean, God, yeah. we're, we're seeing great things happen in our, in our school, in our team, in the lives of people. And it was powerful. It was a powerful time. Yeah, so, so often you hear being set today now, nowadays, like when they take God out of school is when, when you know, everything is happening, when it's got a challenge, when it's really tough. But what you were saying, you can bring God, especially to the students back in the school. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, I would. We, we got together as a team and began to pray before, uh, before games. And uh, it, it grew. You know, even some kids that didn't really have any faith, didn't want to be a part of it, they began to become a part of that because they saw that it was something powerful and real that was taking place. Wow, that, that is really cool. Now yeah. today, you've been here, you've been married about 17 years yeah. in, in marriage and, and, and then in ministry for a long time. Yeah. It's, and, and then you end up in Ukiah, yeah. Ukiah, California as a senior yeah. pastor. How do you like it here? You know, I, there should be challenges in this area. I love Ukiah. I really, um, you know, before we came to Ukiah, we were approached about coming and taking over the church that was here, the, the River Foursquare Church. And I began to pray about uh, the demographic because I know that this is a county where, you know, a lot of people grow marijuana around mm -hmm. here. There's a, a drug issue. And people, you know, were, there was a lot of naysayers that were in my life. People that had uh, either been a part of what was going on in Ukiah, had been here at one time. And they said, oh, you don't want to go there. It's terrible for your family. And I just had this thing in my heart that was saying, that, that's not the truth. That God wants to use me and my family to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring peace to those that have chaos in their life, and do it through just coming and doing this, having relationship. And, uh, you know, we came to visit Ukiah in our first visit here. I, I, I was sold as soon as we came. I knew, you know, because uh, we visited the church, and it was a lot different than where we came from. When we, when we, uh, when we came to Ukiah, we came from a church in Bakersfield that was almost 5,000 people. That's a big switch. Big you know? switch. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good moment in our life. My, my wife and I were both running 100 miles an hour. My wife was the key administrator at our church for our senior pastor. She basically ran the church from an administrative standpoint, and I was one of the key pastors on staff. And uh, it was really a big change for us. You know, we both had to get jobs. You know, I'm working full time and pastoring the church. And I embrace that. You know, I think it's a great thing because now I'm getting connect with the regular people in the community of Ukiah, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the folks that are what we would consider unchurched, you know, a lot yeah. of them don't have any kind of connection to, to church, to faith, to a relationship with Jesus. I think there's a lot of spiritual people that are out there, but, you know, it, that's kind of like what my, my heart and my passion is to reach these people that think they know what uh, is, is right and help them to understand yeah. the truth, you know, and help them to understand the fact that God loves them, cares about them, has a plan for their life, yeah. Yeah. which is all of what we do. So when, when we came to the river, I said, God, what is it that you want, to, want me to communicate to these people? What, what vision is it that you have for us as a church? And I heard these three words, reach, refresh, restore. What? Yeah. That is crazy because that's what Love Your Life Ministries is all about. Yeah. Renew, refresh, restore, and revive. Yeah. And so that, it's amazing how, how God gave us the same words to say, that's what's needed yeah, in Mendocino County. I, I saw County. that on your website, and I was like, man, she stole my lines. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's funny. That's really funny. And you know, that might be you right now. You might need to be refreshed, restored, renewed, or even revised. Uh, we're going to talk more. We're going to actually give you some tools that will help you how to do that. But before we do that, we will be right back. Hi, my name is Ingeliz Denite, and I just uh, spoke with Barbara on the show, uh, Love Your Life. And I myself, I truly love my life, the way the Lord Jesus Christ restored my life, renew it, 
uh, it's absolutely incredible and I was very happy to share that on the on the show with Barb and Barbara is absolutely amazing and I love the her ministry uh, because the more I believe the more we talk about how Jesus Christ uh, heals and restores lives and changes lives uh, the more glory will be to God and uh, will give hope to people so uh, thank you to the ministry I'm very happy to be here and um, Love your life. With me today is Mike Dyer, and he is the senior pastor of the River Four Square Church here in Ukiah, California. And he left being a pastor of a church in Bakersfield of 5,000 people. And here he is now in Ukiah today, where only 4% or less goes to church of the population. Now, when you got to Ukiah, big changes, yeah. and, and then you end up having to work full time on the side yeah. of it. Now, do you know what I think that is? What's that? Insanity. Yeah. So, but but working being among the people has a blessing i just started working among the people and i used to be everything christian everything i did yeah. and you know those other people they're awesome yeah they're just great yeah people i actually like them better than church people. i i know i know <laughs> just that i have had that too because it doesn't seem like they hurt so much when yeah. things go wrong i've, I've yeah. learned that when when christians do something that you think they should not do that you take it more personal because you expect them to be perfect. Yeah. And from non-Christians, you don't expect that. Yeah. And you get to see just real, real yeah. people. It's kind of us often doing that sure. ourselves. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. And it's like working in that environment, because I look at the contrast between being in full-time ministry, which of course I, lo I love yeah. doing oh, yeah. it. I, and I really feel that there is a call in my life to be full-time ministry. But during this season of where I'm getting to be bivocational, um, it's really cool because when, when you're in the church, you get in this bubble of where I'm just around church people all the time. Yeah. I'm just around other pastors all the time. I'm just around other staff people all the time. And all we're talking about in life is our ministry and what we're doing. And what is what has switched is now I'm in this uh, secular environment where I'm getting to share my faith in real practical ways with everybody, yeah. customers, uh, uh, other employees, you know, people that are in the, the management line above me, you know, people that I, I get to influence them with how I live my life. And all I am is myself every day. You know, I don't try to put on a front or try to be phony or fake. And that's one thing about me as a Christian. I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm as real as they get. Yeah. What you see is what you get. And I like and, that about yeah. you, Mike. You're, you're just the real deal but how does that work with your company because are you allowed to just share even with customers or is there usually a rule to that because i know there's people out there that want to share their faith yeah but they're afraid to move forward so give me some tools some way i, I think that the that way really that i them. do it is is always very subtle you know i always uh and, and it's not purpose it, it's not like a planned thing hey i'm gonna go in and share my faith with people I just am who I am all the time. So I, you know, I begin to tell people, yeah, hey, my wife and I are new to you, Kaya. You know, we've been here for a few months. Oh, what brought you here? I begin to tell, hey, open door. We also pastor a church here in town, at the other end of town, and I always keep invitations with me, and I actually hand them to people all the time. Hey, I want to invite you to come to my church. Come and mm -hmm. hang out. And several of them have come and visited, and some of them have stayed and been a part of what's going on. And uh, I think the way to do it is not to be overbearing, but just be real with where yeah. you're at. You know, hey, I, I love Jesus, and I'm here to tell people about Jesus through how I live my life. You know, I'm not, I'm not preachy with, with how I talk to people. I'm not preachy or con, uh, uh, condemning or pointing a finger at anybody. I really look at the approach of just building relationship with people because... John Maxwell said this, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's true. And you yeah. can't have a relationship and really have the clout to share Christ with somebody until they really understand how much you care about them. So I'm building rapport with people that are far from yeah, God. Yeah. 
and building relationships with them. I think that's inspiring for all those out there. A couple of things that I did once, which was really kind of freaking scary, to be honest. But I'm sitting on the airport waiting for my family from Holland to arrive. And there is, of course, a delay. And you wait and wait and wait and wait. And on the left of me is an atheist. And on the right of me is a person that lives in Arabia and that was... Yeah from the United States that was very, very abused and very, very hurt. Yeah. And they're both sitting right next to me and I'm yeah. sitting in the middle and they just go on and on and on. And I'm just saying, how am I going to witness to them? Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's this spark saying to me, Barb, all you have to do is just share what God has done for you. Yeah. And I did, and you know, it was really cool. I got to talk with both of them, but the sad part was they both took off after 10 yeah. minutes. But I think, you know, God still touched their heart and yeah. worked with them. Would you agree with that, that it's testimony, who you really are, that usually touches hearts and makes it real? Yeah, I do, and I think that what, what took place in that situation, what takes place a lot of times in what I'm doing too, is we're planting these little seeds of hope and truth that people don't even know are, are hope and truth. Yeah. And, you know, as believers, we believe that God is going to take what we give, our testimony, the stories of what has happened in our life, the little parables that we pick up along the way and we begin to share these things, that those are going to be planted into someone's heart. And at just the right time, they're going to begin to grow. At just the right time, they're going to begin to seed and they're going to begin to uh, be watered in their life. And, you know, I, it's funny. We share those stories with people and we share our faith with people. And it, sometimes they may take off after 10 minutes, but who yeah. knows? They might be going through a situation in their life and they're going to remember the back. time that they met that woman on the plane that talked about Christ. And they're going to come back to that. And yeah. I believe that. You know, you know, I, I see that right. I see that happening in my life now. Kids that were a part of my youth ministry that were just kind of fringe kids, you know, and I always loved them, always cared about them. They never became core kids. They never really made a real definite decision to follow Christ. They find me on Facebook now and hey, thanks for being an influence in my life. I'm now following Christ. And some of them, you know, say I, I got off of drugs and this. And I hear these stories all the time. And it was because I just loved them where they were at. Yeah. And at just the right time, the words of hope and truth that you planted in them are going to begin to grow yeah. and they're going to be harvested and we're going to see lives changed. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to give you actually a tool for that, the five ways that you can pray, five super prayer tips that really will help you actually to pray and to help to get focused to be able to do that yourself. But before we do that, we will be right back. Love Life Today is doing events and we love for you to find out about it. What is it about? It is about restoring, refreshing, renewing and reviving lives. It is about you reaching your full potential, which you can with the help of God. And what we do is we have guest speakers and we connect with people and we just are there for each other. I would love for you to become part of our community. And what we're really trying to do is for you to start a journey and to become aware of your circumstances and to really start living life in such a way that you're into successful living and thriving in life. And in the Bible, it actually talks about that because it says in Matthew 5, verse 16, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. And here is 16 and it says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven and when you start living fully your full potential you're giving it all and start thriving in life that is what love life today wants to help you with and encourage you into we help you to start the journey live your passion start looking what your dream is and how you can thrive in life God loves you so much that He believes in you, that He wants you to fulfill that purpose. And we would love to help you with that and encourage you in that. Check out our toll-free number, 855-836-1100, or go to our website, lovelifetoday.org.
with me today is Mike Dyer, and we're talking about how to reach out to all those around you and not just get into that Christian bubble that you get stuck in. And one of the ways to do that is you can start praying in one way. And I'm going to give you five super prayer tips for that right now. And by the way, if you want to check those out later and go online to our website, barbtv.org, we will give you a free gift to learn about how you can do that yourself as well. Number one, and this is all biblical, bind Satan. You know, all those that don't know Jesus, they're really actually victims and prisoners from Satan. And he's just holding them there and doesn't want them to know what God has in store for them. His love, his grace, his goodness. So bind Satan and say, I pray in the name of Jesus for Satan to be bound, for that stronghold to be stopped. Number two pray that their eyes will be opened and their ears are heard because Satan has put a veil over them so they will not be able to see that. Pray in the victory of Jesus that that veil will be removed. Number three, pray for them that they will be able to see God as truth, that they will be able to receive the truth that God is sharing in his word, the Bible. And you know, there is over 3,000 promises in the Bible that really you could, even if they're specific for people or for everyone, that really actually would really help people. If even if you just pray those promises over your loved one or your friend one that does not know Jesus. Number four, Number four is pray for harvesters. There is a huge harvest out there and there's a lot of people as Mike shared that are just so ready to hear the truth, to hear about Jesus being the one way, the truth and the life. And you know, pray for God to bring people in their life that are able to share that truth with them. And then lastly, but absolutely not least, super prayer tip number five is thank God for the answer he is going to give. It says in the Bible, don't be anxious, but pray about everything. And if you thank God for what he's going to do and how he's going to answer that, it brings blessing, it brings trust and belief that he's going to answer that. And that might help you to get on the foot, to be able to go out there like what you're doing. Am I right, Mike? That's right. So, and then just to move forward yep. and to work with that. So. Well, you got to begin to pray before you go. Exactly. If yeah. you go without praying, then you're not prepared. I mean, that, that is really the way I believe that God prepares our hearts. I have to spend time praying, uh, thinking about his word. I'm committed to a daily Bible reading that I'm doing right now uh -huh. with our church. Uh, we, we do it as a church together. I have a link to it on our website so that people can go to it and do the daily Bible reading with us. And that's what fills my tank up so that I can go throughout and have the rest of my day where I can impact people's lives yeah. and share that truth that Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life, and that his life, death, and resurrection changes everything in yeah. our lives. So now what has been the hardest thing for you to deal with as a pastor? People. <laughs> <laughs> they can be oh, nasty, can't man. they? People have their own ideas about the Who way you are things supposed are, to be yeah, the way things are supposed to be and I think the biggest hurdle that I've always had to overcome no matter what it is is just people's perception about what uh, things are supposed to be and uh, really trying to help people understand how to trust uh, the leaders that God has placed into their life and know that God knows what he's doing and the, the leaders that have placed us where we're at, you know, I mean, obviously I was placed where I'm at because a leader believed in me and trusted what God was saying and, you know, put me where I'm at right now yeah, as yeah. well. And that's always been the biggest hurdle. It's people, you know, yeah. because people can get in the way. They all have different ideas, thoughts, feelings, emotions. And as a pastor, I have to be able to know how to lovingly help them get past that stuff and trust God because really it's a lot of times what I've found is that it's dealing with the fear that people have the fear of the unknown the fear of not knowing what's going to come next the fear of what about this what about that and really helping people to have this balanced life of trust you know yeah. right? not a not a blind faith but really living by faith God calls us to to live by faith you know the righteous shall live by faith. And yeah. so I'm really trying to teach people that. But as a pastor, it's got to be hands down people. Yeah, you know, and, and time, of course, but it's time management is always tough because as pastors, we tend to uh, spin a lot of plates at one time. And it's, it's very important for me to surround myself with the right people to be able to delegate those uh, tasks that I need to delegate to 
and make sure that I'm not trying to do everything by myself. Because early on in my ministry, I try to do everything. Doesn't work. Yeah. I'm still in that shoe a lot of times, yeah. and it, it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, God, God has given me this ability to do a lot of things yeah. and to do quite a few of them well. But at the same time, I have to remember that I'm supposed to teach people to do that stuff and then release them into ministry. Yeah. And so I'm really at a point in my life where I want to um, help people to develop those gifts that God has placed inside of them and then release them to do the work of the ministry. Yeah. You know, part of my passion, you know, one of them is, of course, reaching people, reaching the lost. But the second part of that is to build the church and not just in the local church, but through the local church, building the rest of the church so that people can, you know, find out how they're gifted because God has given gifts to everybody. Yes, he has. And all of them need to be used and all of them become a part of that body of Christ. And through that, we get to, to know and understand how we're supposed to be used by God. Yeah, and that brings unity to the church mm -hmm. as well. Now, Mike, if anybody's interested to kind of contact you or to find out more about what you do and where yeah. you pastor and all that, where is it that they can go? Well, they can go to our website. Our website is uh, www.theriverfoursquare.org. And you could also check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash The River Ukiah, uh, at The River Ukiah on Twitter. And uh, you could always uh, send us an email, info at theriverfoursquare.org. And we'd love to have you guys come visit us. We're at 195 Low Gap Road right here in Ukiah. We meet Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. And uh, that's probably going to be changing pretty soon. We're actually out of room. Our church has grown so right. much in 10 months. We've actually tripled in size. Whoa. And we're about ready to bust at the seams. So uh, pray for us. Pray that God would give us direction on what, what to do next. And uh, we would love to uh, have any of you guys out there that are maybe seeking to find a church, a local church where you can come and find hope and truth and allow God to restore that brokenness in your life, refresh that weariness in your life. And uh, we would love to have you come and join us. Mike, thank you. You're welcome. You're thank an awesome you. pastor. Thank, thank you. you so thank much you. for following God's call. Yeah. And then I just wanted to say you heard restore, refresh, deal with the brokenness, be with the pain. And my question to you right now is, is what is that pain? What is that struggle? And what is it that you need to do to move forward in life? God wants to help you. Jesus wants to be there with you. And you might want to say right now, how corny. Well, corny or not, it doesn't matter. It's still the answer to what you need. We love to connect with you. We love to reach out to you. Our number is 855-836-1100 or contact us at our website, which is barbtv.org. And if you go to our website, we have that free download for you to help and encourage you. And just know, Jesus believes in you. God loves you unconditionally, and we love to help you to love your life by thriving in Christ. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Janice Obi, and I am the TV coordinator for the Barb Marshall Show with Love Your Life Ministries. And I'm here today to uh, invite you that if you have had an experience in your life where it's been life-changing and you have been either revived, renewed, restored, or refreshed through the love of Jesus Christ, we would love to hear from you. Do call us or email us, and we would love to talk to you and hear your story. And, and if it is possible, have you come out and be a part of our show to where you can share your story.